When you go to a new park and ride a coaster, most of the time it is what you expect. Other times it totally falls flat and you come off disappointed. That happens more than you'd hope it would. I might go over that later, but today I want to look at the other side. Rides that you come off totally stoked and completely exceed your expectations. These are the top 15 coasters that knocked my socks off. Keep in mind, this list is really about expectations. I either went in with no expectations and came off impressed, or I went in with tempered expectations and came off absolutely enthralled. Either way, you won't see coasters like Steel Vengeance on here. I thought that could be my number one going in, and I lived up to it. Same with Fury 325. I went in knowing the hype, and even though I was skeptical about how much I like it, I wouldn't say it knocked my socks off. Just lived up to the upper end of my expectations. Before we start, if you get me to a thousand likes, I'll put together the other side of this video and talk about my biggest disappointments. Let's throw in a few honorable mentions. Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia always seemed like a cheap hyper. Something Six Flags threw in while they're going bankrupt. A hyper that doesn't even have a 200 foot drop. I didn't realize this would have such an amazing layout. All the forces would be on point, both positive and negative. And I definitely did not expect it to be my number two B&M hyper when all is said and done. Comet at Hershey Park was just an old wooden coaster in the shadow of Skyrush, and after, I was so excited to ride that and came off so disappointed. Hint, look for that in the next video. We walked over to Comet and it was everything Skyrush was not. Pleasant. Buzz bars. You could feel the airtime, and your legs weren't being actively severed. I haven't liked it as much in recent years, but my first trip to Hershey Park, it was borderline my favorite coaster in the park. Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. This was never on my RMC radar. It was a second tier coaster on my cross country trip. I actually had higher expectations for Wooden Warrior. I didn't know how much of a powerhouse this was going to be, and after 6 rides I knew I made a mistake. This flew into my top 15. It just shows you, you don't have to be big to be powerful, you just have to make sure those elements are in proportion. Great Nor'easter at Maury's Piers. I knew this was supposed to be the best SLC. Upgraded trains, fresh new track. But I had ridden refurbished SLCs before and they were good, but not great. Great Nor'easter was great. I'd put this in the top half of my B&M invert list. It ran so well and it was so intense, showcasing how good that SLC layout can be when you're not in pain. Let's get to the list. Number 15, Thunderbird at Holiday World. In 2016, I went on the grand tour of American wing coasters. I had already ridden X-Flight three years prior, but I was on a road trip that would hit Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. Wild Eagle at Dollywood, and Thunderbird at Holiday World. These are fun rides, nothing that special. So by the time I got to Holiday World to ride my last wing, I wasn't expecting a whole lot. Thunderbird absolutely delivered, starting with that launch. Very rare on a B&M. Over 3,000 feet of track and four inversions. Some of it going out into the trees, really bringing that intensity the others were missing, and twisting through that shack to end. It was the only wing coaster that landed in my top 50. The others weren't anywhere close. Number 14, Skyrocket at Kennywood. I missed this my first time in 2018. It had some extended downtime waiting for a part, so I was happy to finally ride it in 2021. It wasn't anything I was super excited for. A rolling launch, a top hat, a couple inversions, a pretty short ride on a small plot of land, a legit coaster, a credit. But wouldn't you know, this would fly into my top 100. It's not a perfect ride, or even a complete ride, but in the back row, the insane airtime I got over the 95 foot top hat, and the insanity of that zero-g roll. Seriously, one of my favorite inversions ever. You're out of your seat the whole time while being flipped around laterally. Then I got flung out of my seat off the mid-course. Suddenly, this becomes my second favorite ride in the park. Just insane forces I was not expecting. Number 13, Lightning Rod at Dollywood. I was excited to ride this, the first ever launched wooden coaster. The main reason we scheduled our 2016 road trip to pass through Dollywood and all those nervous months and weeks and days leading up to the trip and all the problems the ride was having. But our trip landed the same week as opening day, so we got lucky. I did a pre-trip ranking list, and based on the POV, I was actually more excited for Goliath at Great America and Voyage at Holiday World. After the trip, it was Lightning Rod that was king, and it was my number three overall coaster. Remember, this was 2016 Lightning Rod. It was running at its max speed. I got ejected over the top of the lift, 
I got airtime on the wave turn, which I was not expecting, and the breakneck ejector fest through the woods, ending with a quad down. I remember just screaming on the brake run because that masterpiece of a coaster just knocked my socks off. We're never gonna get 2016 lightning rod back. That's so far long gone, it's not even funny. Number 12, X at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Now we're going way back to when I was a kid, just barely getting into high school, just getting into coasters. And my home park, Magic Mountain, was opening two massive coasters in 2001, Deja Vu and X. Deja Vu came and I went to its grand opening, got the second public train, and then I waited forever for X, finally waiting four hours to ride it right after Christmas. This was a coaster unlike any other ever made, not only the first coaster to have seats on the side of the track, but they also rotated on their own axis. Plus, this thing was over 200 feet tall and had a near vertical drop. When you're 14 years old and you have X happen to you, I don't even know how to describe it. It was worth every second of that four hour wait. I always took it for granted, but I can understand why so many people visiting Magic Mountain have this at the very top of their bucket list. Number 11, Viper at Six Flags Great America. The first time I rode this was in 2013 and the trains ran backwards. I didn't like it that much and it didn't leave much of an impression. The reason it's on this list is because the first time I rode it forward in 2016. My expectations were especially low, having already ridden it once. But Viper Ford was a different beast. I could not believe the quantity and quality of airtime I was getting over every hill. And I remember turning to my wife at the end and saying, Oh my god, that was actually really, really good. I don't know what it is about this Cyclone clone. I was just so used to Cyclone at Magic Mountain beating me to a pulp and handing out no forces. But this one isn't just bearable. It's one of my all-time favorite wooden coasters. Even as of 2023, it holds up. Number 10, Helix at Leesburg. Before I went on my trip to Europe, I ranked my most anticipated coasters. Helix came in at number 6. Pretty good, but looking back on it, it's a joke it wasn't even in my top 5. I have a love-hate relationship with mock multi-launch coasters, but Helix isn't any normal multi-launch. Over 4,500 feet of track, taking place on a hillside, 7 inversions, 2 launches, forces of all kinds. I figured it would be a good ride, but the word that came to mind after I hit the brake run was elite. This is my current favorite coaster in Europe, and it showed me that a mock multi-launch in its best form could be one of the best coasters in the world. Number 9, Medusa at Six Flags Marine World. I know, it's Discovery Kingdom now, but when I went there for my first time in 2001, it was Marine World, and I had my sights set on Medusa. This was the same year I was waiting around for Deja Vu and X, so I was still a pretty new enthusiast, and the B&M Flores Coaster really intrigued me. Nowadays, Flores Coasters are just whatever, but I could not express how cool it was to ride my first one in 2001. Medusa was everything I could have wanted and more. From that 150 foot straight drop, giving surprisingly good airtime, that giant vertical loop, that insane zero-g roll, the sea serpent roll, which was a cool take on the cobra roll, then that whip off the mid-course brakes into its final course screws, doing all this with your feet hanging and nothing beneath them. Medusa shot up into my top five coasters, and little did I know at the time, my first flawless would arguably be the best in the world. The only one that lived up to it over the years was Kraken. Number eight, Monster at Adventureland. I thought it was cool that a small park in Iowa got a new Gerslauer. Yeah, it was pretty big at 133 feet. Yeah, it had a custom layout covering 5 inversions and spanning over 2,500 feet of track. But I thought all the hype was because it was in Iowa, and they don't always get nice things. I rode Hangtime thinking it would be like Cannibal, but it wasn't anywhere near that. Monster restored my faith in the Gerslauer Infinity, just a masterclass of forces. So much Hangtime, so much whip, good airtime, every element so good in its own way. This blew me away the first time I rode it in 2021, and I came back in 2022 and loved it even more. Don't sleep on Monster, it's so insanely good. Number seven, Mad Mouse at Michigan's Adventure. This was my third and final Arrow Mouse. I'd ridden Psycho Mouse at Great America and I thought it was good. Then I rode Mad Mouse at Valley Fair and I thought it was pretty bad. So I went to get the credit at Michigan's Adventure, not thinking much of it, waiting forever to ride it, but wouldn't you know, it was worth it. This thing was whipping around its corners. That was cool, but once it started ripping into its airtime hills, I was getting flung out of my seat. Airtime on a wild mouse, and not just mild floater, but insane ejector. It's a party anytime you can get your hands on that, and I would have loved to get a re-ride, but wasn't about to wait another half an hour. I'm glad I got the one, and this is officially the best wild mouse I've ever been on. Number 6, Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England. 
When I went to the East Coast in 2015, I wasn't a big enthusiast. We were just going to see New York City. I figured I'd show my wife El Toro, and we had an extra day, so I figured we could check out another park I used to know so much about, Six Flags New England. It just so happens we got there right after they opened their new coaster, Wicked Cyclone. I knew very little about RMC at the time. I didn't know the hype. I was much more excited to ride the legendary Superman, then known as Bizarro. But you look out and see that vibrant orange track on the wood structure, and you're naturally intrigued. June 6, 2015. This was the day I fell in love with RMC. It was everything I ever wanted in a coaster. So much ejector airtime and whippy inversions, all on a glossy smooth steel track. We were just lapping this thing all night. We ended up with 10 or 11 rides, and this became my number two overall coaster. Turns out, my first RMC was a great one, and after nine years, it's still in my top five. Number five, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket at Universal Studios Florida. This thing is so high because it knocked my socks off, not once, but twice. I was officially not an enthusiast in 2012. I had just gotten married. It was January, so we wanted to go somewhere warm for a honeymoon, so we went to Orlando to check out all the big parks. I didn't know anything about Rip Ride Rocket. It was just this giant coaster running along Universal's Main Street. But we got on it around six times, selecting different music each time. And honestly, I couldn't tell you anything about the forces for my rides in 2012. But I can tell you, we had the best time on this coaster. So I leave and don't come back for nine years. By 2021, I'm fully back as an enthusiast. I've been doing YouTube for three years, and I don't know what to expect from Rip Ride Rocket this time around. It doesn't have the best reputation. We have time for one ride. We get assigned the back row, and everything about the ride just obliterates my socks. I was sockless by the end of it. Insane forces all around. It was a bit shaky, but not too bad. The mid-course brake runs weren't even on. I was so happy that the coaster I remember loving back in 2012 was still great, and even better than I could have ever imagined. It landed inside my top 20. Number four, X-Flight at Six Flags Worlds of Adventure. My first big coaster road trip was in 2002, and I was very fortunate to make the trip to Worlds of Adventure, my only time there before it closed in 2007. X-Flight was in its second year, my first ever flying coaster experience, so I was intrigued. I never thought the ride would be as great as it was. Getting strapped into the train, starting on your back, but then being flipped over on your stomach, and you feel like you're flying around the Six Flags parking lot, throwing in a vertical loop on your back, which is just insane, and a great Helix finale. This was the highlight of the day and a coaster we couldn't stop talking about after. This was no gimmick, it was a really great ride. Number three. Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. I came to Kings Island in 2016, my first time there in 14 years, and I love what Cedar Fair did to the place. Then, they announced Mystic Timbers, but it doesn't even register on my radar. It's just a GCI twister. I'd ridden Thunderhead, and it was good, but not great. Same with Apocalypse at Magic Mountain. I get back to Kings Island in 2018 and check it out, and I could not believe what GCI was able to do with it. There isn't another GCI like this one. I know Prowler has a similar layout, but it doesn't have the same bite as Mystic Timbers. It was out of control and managed to have some great airtime from start to finish. The shed aside, that was kinda overhyped, but I didn't care. This landed in my top 20 and I never thought that'd be possible. Number 2. Zippin' Pippin' at Bay Beach Before I rode this in 2020, I didn't know much about it. I knew it was in Green Bay. I knew it was from the Gravity Group. I knew it had a basic layout. I had very little expectations for it. Just the custom wooden coaster to add to my list. I was really impressed with Bay Beach from the start. This public park turned theme park, selling tickets to ride on the cheap. Zippin' Pippin' is only a dollar per ride. Then I ride it, I get the back row, and from the first drop to the final turnaround, I am flying out of my seat. Great floater on every hill. Then we hit the ejector death hill and it tries to launch me to the North Pole. I scream so loud, I scared the kids in front of me. Sorry kids, but you don't get airtime that strong too often, especially when you're not expecting it. The whole ride, I'm thinking, this is probably a top 50 coaster. Then, after that last hill, I knew it could be top 30. I hadn't heard anyone talk about this coaster before I went up to ride it, and I'm glad it seems to be getting its due now. Number 1. El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure When I went to Great Adventure for the first time in 2008, I had been way out of the coaster loop. I knew all about Great Adventure for my time as an enthusiast. Nitro, Medusa, Chiller, that was removed the year prior. But now, they had this massive wooden coaster that looked pretty good, El Toro. All it took was one ride and I had a revelation. Oh my god, I have a new number one. Had I been in the coaster scene, I probably would have expected that. But I wasn't, so I didn't expect this wooden coaster to be that smooth and that powerful. 
Not even Steel Vengeance gave me that feeling. Just that 100% sure hook, line, and sinker. That's the best coaster I've ever ridden, period. I will never forget my first ride on El Toro, or the four other I got that day, or the eight I got when I came back in 2015, or the four in 2018, or the eight in 2019. El Toro is just a magical ride and I hope to get back there this summer. I just hope it's running somewhat like it used to. That's a wrap on the coasters that knocked my socks off. Let me know what you think about these coasters and what coasters blew you away the first time you rode them. Get me to a thousand likes and I'll talk about my top 15 most disappointing coasters. And give me a sub if you're new here and love coasters. Also, check out my second channel where I post copyright free off-ride footage and my baseball channel if you're also a baseball fan. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.